40 years ago, oh Lord, it's like in the Civil War era. 40 years ago, I, I did my internship. Now, you have to understand this scenario. They get all of these uh, people in seminary together, maybe there are 30 of us, and then they get 30 internship pastors there. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a middle school dance. You try to find someone that you partner with, right? That's, that's the way it is. And so the pastors kind of are picking over all of the students and the students are picking over the pastors. <laughs> That's really what it's like. Isn't that what a middle school dance is like? That, that's, that's what it is. Right? That, that's what it is. So I, I, I'm there and I'm trying to talk to these different people. And so I, I talked to this one guy. He was all in black. I mean, he was one of the only people all in black. A couple of them. And I thought, boy, these guys look interesting. All in black. So I was talking to this one guy. I think he had a black shirt on, but he was wearing khaki pants. So he was kind of like the guys that were all in black, but not quite like the guys that were all in black. And I thought, this guy looks a little different. So I found out that he served an inner city church in Philadelphia. It was in the ghetto of Philadelphia. And the congregation was a black congregation. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. I wonder what it would be like to serve that church for it's just a year, right? You can do anything for a year. So I signed up with him. And he picked me. We're there. Right? So I move into the inner city of Philadelphia. I'm the only white guy in the neighborhood. You know, the abandoned buildings, and, and it's, it's the whole scenario that you see on the TV. And I'd never been there. I was the only intern that had never gone to check out the neighborhood first. I should have done that. <laughs> I would have picked one of the other guys. So I got out to the neighborhood, and so we're having our first service. Now, back in those days, 40 days, do you, do you remember the red service book and hymnal? Yeah. The red service book and hymnal, right. They weren't using the red service book and hymnal. No, no, no. They were using the green book. Remember the green book that we used to have? Yeah. They were using the green book. So I said, okay, I can adapt to this. And then it comes time for communion. We all get set for communion. The pastor does the consecration. And then George hits the piano. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We're going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. No more fear around that table. And people are clapping. As they go up to communion, I thought, where am I? Where am I? They were clapping. They were smiling going up to communion. This was so completely foreign to me. When we go to communion, we don't sing about the welcome table. There's no joy. We are carrying all the guilt of the world on our shoulders. You don't look up. You look down. Heaven forbid you make eye contact with anyone. That's the big no-no. Do not make eye contact. You look down. And, uh, oh, I don't even want to go up to the altar because it means I have to carry that burden one more step. And it's too much for me. And we don't sing, we're going to sit at the welcome table. What do we sing? What do we sing? You don't know? Come on. What do we sing when we go to communion? We sing what? Lamb of God, you what? Maybe you take away my sin if you are having a good day. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. You know, my hope before God is that God looks away and then I could sneak in. You know? Maybe. And if you smile and you get too joyful, you know what happens? You know? Look who's smiling. I wouldn't be smiling if I was them for Pete's sex, right? And so when you think about this for a moment, if you're a good Lutheran, you've been brought up in the Lutheran church. I remember when I was a little kid, I was in church, and the pastor said, you are forgiven. I went, yeah. My mother said, you stop it. 
You know, I said, well, you said we're forgiven. You wait until you get home. <laughs> you, 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 you know, no, no Cheerios and raisins for me that morning. <laughs> we carry this guilt thing with us. We carry this with us. It's kind of amazing how we carry it with us. Um, and so that, you know, when we get to Lent, it's like, oh, I can relax. It's Lent. You know, for 47 Sundays, I've had to fake it. Now I can just be that melancholy, burdened self. I find that really fascinating. Really fascinating. And when I was in that black parish, that really opened for me this whole realization that there, there's great joy in the Christian walk, yet um, because we're forgiven, and yet the greatest issue is, can I live? I mean, I was kind of born melancholy. That's kind of my genetic makeup, you know? That, that's just my genetic makeup. I mean, some people are more ebullient. I, I just don't have that makeup. Maybe I'll blame it on my mother or something. Uh, uh, but that's just the way I am. But here, here you have all this good news of great joy, and, and, and yet we live with this kind of um, oppressive sense of, you know, don't smile too much, don't get too ebullient. I, I remember in my old church, if you clapped, there were people who really objected to clapping during church. Too much joy. Can't have that. Right? I mean, that, that's a big no-no to clap in church, especially if you've been in the church for a long time. No clapping, no smiling. And I, I remember one day I was working with the kids and I had a picture of Jesus laughing. You ever see the picture of Jesus laughing? Right now, showing the kids the picture of Jesus laughing. And then after the service, some of the old guard in the church came up to me and said, Oh, I hate that picture. <laughs> Ooh, take my breath away. We, we don't like to deal with, I'll get to this at some other time, we don't like to deal with the humanity of Jesus. You know? That Jesus burped. Oh, not my Jesus. Or that Jesus had body odor. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't like to deal with the humanity of Jesus. Jesus smiling. We don't like to deal with that. Now, there's psychological reasons for that. I'll get into that at some other time. But it's really interesting to think about the full humanity of Jesus and how so much of that makes us uncomfortable. So we're even uncomfortable with Jesus laughing. So I ask, where's the joy? Where's the looseness? Are we so weighed down with stuff that we can't that we can't be loose and celebrate and clap and sing for, and sing with joy? Now, if you look at the readings for today, the readings for today really emphasize this. I find joy in God's presence. Where's the joy? And Jesus said. I've come that you I've come that you may have what? Life and that you may have it abundantly. That's a little poke. Boom. I've come that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Joy. It's another boom. So we get to the reading today, and the reading today is very interesting. Because um, here you have Jesus, and Jesus is, uh, next week is Palm Sunday, and the entrance to Jerusalem, and, and Jesus is killed. And so, if you read the reading today, what most people focus on is that Jesus is about ready to what? Die. Die. <sighs> Darkness, guilt. Jesus is going to die. I would suggest to you that's a, that that is the, that is a, understandable, but let's look at it a little bit differently. Jesus is having a dinner party. Dinner parties are usually filled with what? Joy. Joy. Right, joy. And then Mary comes, and Mary's got the perfume, right? and Mary's anointing Jesus. What is that called? Celebration. Celebration. And then Judas, being a good Lutheran, <laughs> Judas 
says what? A good Catholic, Catholic or Lutherans. I mean, Catholics don't have a monopoly on guilt. It's like an oligarchy. You know, the Catholics and Lutherans are like the Ford and the GM of guilt. So Judas is there, and what does Judas say? You money waster. You money waster. That money should be given to the poor. Right? You should feel guilty. Guilty. Yes. And he's thrown the guilt trip on Jesus for Pete's sakes. You know, the way you're allowing her to do it. That's terrible. What a good blueprint he is. I mean, is there, is there one of us who doesn't indulge in something? You know, if you're going to have... If you, uh, did you get new sneakers? Oh, Jeff. <laughs> You've got to, you, 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 you got to play along. Debbie, did you get your sneakers? Yes. yes. How much did you pay for them? Oh, a lot. A lot. But you got them on sale. sale. <laughs> oh, that makes it okay. <laughs> you got them on sale. That makes it all right. If you didn't get them on sale, then oh, you have to feel guilty. Bring that to the communion table for Pete's sakes. That's like spreading the oil with Jesus and wasting that money. You could have spent that money on the but, right. But then, 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 then the author of John blows it. Judas doesn't say this because he's concerned about the poor. Judas says this because he's just ripping off everybody and he wants the money for himself. All right. So it was all perfect until then. All perfect until then. So then. So remember, what does Jesus do? Jesus said, I've come to bring you joy. There's a little, little punch. And then Jesus said, I've come that you may have abundant life. There's a little punch. Now Jesus comes in. Yeah, but uh, I, I feel so badly. Yeah, but I screw up so much. Yeah, but I'm such a sinner. Oh, I, 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 I goof up. I, I, I've come to bring you joy. Boom. I've come that you may have abundant life. Boom. Yeah, but still, still. Uh, I know, I, I know, I'm forgiven up here, but I really just don't feel that joy, abundant life. And then he comes in with what I call the left hook, knockout punch. Jesus says to them, "Look, I'm gonna die. How much time do you think I have? Let's celebrate. Yeah." That's the knockout punch. Because at some level, what Jesus is saying is, how long do you think you're going to live? How much time do you think you have? Celebrate. <laughs> Celebrate. That's the knockout punch. Live with joy. I find it really interesting that when someone dies, what do we have? We don't do funerals anymore. We call them what? Celebration of life. When I die, you have a celebration of life. I'm not even going to be there. Right? I mean, how dumb is that? Celebrate life now when you're living. Forget the celebration of life thing when we're gone. What good is that? Celebrate life when you're living. That is really what the message here is in this story. And Jesus is saying to them, look, we do what we can for the poor. That's what he was teaching right along. And he's saying there's a time to celebrate because how long do you think you're going to be here? And that's something that I don't know that we appropriate as much as we might as Christians. I think we appropriate the guilt thing left and right, right? We get that. But how about the celebration? How about the celebration? How long are you going to be here? I figure if I'm lucky, let's say I'm 65, if I can make it to 80, it'd be pretty good. That's 15 years. And every year I'm going to get stronger and stronger and healthier and healthier, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to get better and better every year and I'm going to check out at, my, at the height of my being. Is that, is, that, is that right? I don't think so. I don't think so. It doesn't work that way. Celebrate the goodness of life. Celebrate it.
That's the message of Jesus here in this, in this passage. It's kind of an anti-Lenten message because the people who put these readings together are focusing not on the celebration. What do they focus? They're good Lutherans. They're good Catholics. They're focusing on what instead? Yeah. The death. Right. Let's focus on the life and remember the death. Have a little joy. Thank you for your attention. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.